What's up, Raf gang? It's Raf in the Raf Cave. Welcome back to another reaction. This is going to be another video of various interviews with the Mortal Kombat movie cast. So uh, it's about a 15-minute video and uh, some new interviews. And I always want to get some more insight on the on the actors and what they enjoyed about making this movie and the, the love for the director and how excited they are to show us what they brought to the franchise and that they want to continue this franchise as long as we can support it, which I definitely will. And then the second one is going to be from uh, Uncaged Games. Guy's awesome. Tons of videos. Loves Mortal Kombat. Great channel. Live streams. All that stuff. And then we'll watch his video where he actually gets to interview the actors. You lucky mo... That's pretty damn cool. So I'm going to watch his video on that. So without further ado... Let's watch the first interview, and then we'll watch Uncaged Games. All right, let's go. Uh, Josh, yeah, I... And for the record, the reason why I'm not doing a live stream of this, because there's various trolls out there that want to spoil the movie in my live stream with my Raft Gang audience. So I'm not doing a live stream on this anymore, unfortunately. But anyway, let's continue. I, I read you were at Second City doing improv for a year. Did that help you for your character? <laughs> Look, um, I, I have a, a long improv background. Um, you know, I, I've done it all over the world, you know, in, in Australia and in the States and Singapore and stuff. Um, but uh, it helps me with every role I play. Even if I don't improvise in a role, it helps me just discover who the character is, even in my own private rehearsals, right? I'll just improvise around and try to find their voice and their the way they move and all that sort of stuff. As it turns out in Mortal Kombat, I was able to, uh, you know, I had a bit of freedom to, to improvise on set. And, uh, you know, they used they used a, a bit of that um, in the film. And uh, yeah, it definitely helped solidify the character for sure. I, particularly getting his voice and the way he'd react and act with characters. Yeah, the improv definitely helped me um, push the boundaries of, uh, of what I, yeah, I'm discovering him. And, and how were the the rehearsals with Jessica with for both of you? Because basically you you're like the odd couple here. <laughs> yeah, we joke that we're like an old married couple. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like getting mad at him for not flushing the toilet or putting the toilet totally. down or something, you know. Um, it was fun. I mean, we didn't necessarily do rehearsals for the acting side of things on set that was just kind of in the moment it was fun that the d director simon gave us the freedom to play and it was fun for me to play off josh and obviously he's a very talented improviser so that was really fun to we never knew what we were going to get from him but then in terms of the fighting we really had to um rehearse that and they were like really choreographed fights so we spent a lot more time rehearsing those than we did the actual scenes yeah. Um, did, did you have to rehearse a lot of uh, the fighting? Because I guess you're not martial artists like the rest of the cast. Mm. Uh, Sebastian, what do you what do you say? Uh, <laughs> you mean this is a this is a weapon? Um, you no, you're right. We, should, we did have to rehearse all that, and it was fun. It was it was difficult. It was fun, and uh, it was totally a new, for me a new a new skill. I've never um, you know. I, in films in the past, I probably had to, you know, punch or slap one time. It was never a sequence of uh, fight like it was in this. So this was totally new for me. And uh, but yeah, Jess and I, uh, Jess is the, the person I worked with the most on all that stuff. Um, so it was yeah, we we worked as much as we could together. Um, we and, also had uh, great stunt doubles that would help us and and also stepped in if things were getting a bit hairy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, for sure. It was, it was a mix of, um, of getting, you know, of rehearsing as much as we could and then letting the stunt doubles, uh, the stunt team do what they do best, which is make us look better. <laughs> yeah. uh, did you watch the original movie because both of your characters were there? I, I did as a kid, but you know, I, I, we all made a conscious effort to avoid watching it before shooting this one. We just I didn't, did. I didn't want it. No, no, I did. I watched it. Oh, right you did? Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, I hadn't I seen did. it growing up. Oh, right. What's it? I mean, I, I, I mean, it was hilarious. Weird. It was hilarious. Yeah. It's so I want to rewatch it. 
It was so different. Well, I haven't. Well, again, now that we've shot the movie, I yeah. still want to rewatch it because it was. It's so far from our movie as well. Totally. Um, but you know, it definitely gave me an idea of the world that I didn't know enough about. So it was helpful in that respect. But it's yeah. so different from our film. They could be completely different movies. They, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, they could be different franchises essentially from watching the two. So, yeah. Yeah, in, in the video game, in the original video game, Kano is uh, Japanese American. Mm -hmm. The movie Model Combat from '95 portrayed him as Australian because the, mm -hmm. the actor was Australian. So that that's uh, an, an heritage from the movie, not from the video game. Well, you're at look. There's there's a bit of truth to that, and 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 you may be slightly off. I don't know if he's Australian. I actually think he's English. Mm. Uh, yeah, he English. But. Um, Yes, I understand that because of what he did, Sonia Blay, in that thing, in the, in the movie, I remember him saying, his accent's quite odd, to be totally honest. It's, it's, a, it's a weird Aussie accent in a way. It's clearly not natural. Um, but thanks to him, the character then became Australian. Yeah. And without that, there's no way I would ever have been kind of. I'm so so far so good. That's just great, great questions. That that These two are made. awesome I together. Whatever, good chemistry. She is gorgeous, me, by the way. Is Sonia? Wow. And good fight chore <laughs> choreography. For, Those for guys Max, pulled it off good. Uh, so how's that good. Being a stunt coordinator, and that the uh, first Mortal Kombat movie is Lao way Lao different Lao. from this one. Wow. That's an interesting question. Um, I think you know there's something about working as a crew member on a film, meaning behind the camera, um, as opposed to when you're working in front of the camera. Um, to me, I, um, I always see myself more as a filmmaker in general. And I like I this guy. As, he really knows a lot of martial art. The filmmaking process as possible. Well trained. Um, one of them is obviously acting, but having had a, um, a background in stunts and stunt coordinating and action directing. I mean, it, it makes it so much easier when you have to then be in front of the camera and um, do your own fights, do your own stunts, because I believe that a good action director should know about how to perform as well, and not only about how to choreograph. Then also what is very important is um, to know about the camera angles, how to place them. And then the final thing would be, you know, in the editing room, you will have to learn how to edit. So all of these elements, when you put them together, will make a great fight scene. It's not only, you know, one, one of those things, but they have to be there put into combination in order to, to work. And, and that's why I think it's, yeah, it's so helpful to have that experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Luri, originally, Liu Kang basically was a Bruce Lee knockoff on, on, the, on the Mortal Kombat game in the 90s. So how, how make your own Liu Kang and try to differentiate from Bruce Lee with all the traits and the yells and stuff? Yeah, I think... Um, I... I would embrace that. Don't too. you don't have to make Bruce yourself different than Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. I think it's characters takes inspiration from Bruce Lee. Absolutely. He said that you know there is no form. All form is restriction and it's about self-expression. So if you want to really pay respects to Liu Kang, you have to come up with a way to express yourself in the way that it's truthful to you. Actually, actually Liu Kang has gone through a lot of renditions. In the very original conception, uh, Liu Kang was designed after an actor, Gordon Liu, in 36th Chamber of Shaolin, yet he was actually bald. And then, you know, over time he grew some hair and here he grew a lot of hair. I think with each rendition, Liu Kang's reincarnated. So this time I take it as Liu Kang's re re reincarnated in my body. Um, and I have to make a version of him that makes sense in this world. In this world, Liu Kang is a lost wolf searching for his pack. And eventually he finds his pack to defend the earth. And that's how I took to it. Mm -hmm. Interesting uh, way, looking for you, his pack. Uh, Where I to fit in, are, basically. Are Kung Fu martial artists. Uh, do, do you see any hmm. difference between the Kung Fu that you train between uh, you, Ludi, and you, Matt? 
and the characters that we yeah and, and yourself also uh like the character you're myself, portraying like different from lucky, I think, what you um, know in real life yeah <clears throat> you know being chosen to play kung lao because my previous experience with the martial arts was um i mean um involved some of the styles that kung lao was actually practicing so it made it much easier so it was i found some kind of uh, similarities uh with with me and and kung lao so yeah it was e sure. easier uh, yeah, yeah. Good. and ludi uh, I think there's a big difference between the styles that um, Max and I inherently know. Um, my training was mostly in Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu, uh, but that pushing it's less uh, uh, cinematic. So for me to learn all that over the years, I've learned that fighting on screen is a lot more like dancing where you're not trying to kill the person across from you because otherwise you get another actor hurt and there wouldn't be any film left. Um, it's more like dancing. You have to go with the right beats and you have to make it show on screen because it's meant to be seen for the audience. And it's not until you guys see it that the actual move is complete. So um, I think that's the difference. Kill them. How did you decide to to incorporate all the mythology, leaving fans, you know, with all the Easter eggs, but at the same time, you know, bringing new fans and new things to the to the mythology, of course. Yeah, well, some of them were very big, sort of fundamental um, decisions, and then we were it allowed us to also think about what, what opportunities where we could, where we could put in other pieces of information that would allow it to Ooh, things to exist and for fans to spot and understand Marina. that didn't get in the way of the storytelling for, for yeah. new audiences. So it became part of Ooh, the, the richness of, they looking of back the world at? that someone might be visiting for the first time. But that mythology the set looked great too. And, the, wow. and all of the rules and all the story and all the character elements was really a constant consideration and discussion about how we can it all. how we can use so yeah, much it the, looks so, good. so much material great to armor. work from. Um, it became a question of deciding what to keep in and what to keep out. And, and that was an almost daily discussions on, on how in pre-production on on what we keep in and what we don't. So it was just a never ending conversation as part of the pre-production really on how to balance mm -hmm. that. The, the fights are very different, you know, one from each other. Uh, was there an inspiration of uh, each one of, of the battles of the fights or uh, how did you decide to make them specially different from each of the fights we see in the movie? Yeah, so that was a very considered approach early on, I, I built a, we created a, a fight graph and a fight plan for the whole film. So we That's storyboarded cool. the whole film out. That's cool. Who's going to fight who? Those fights then existed and we knew where they were going to be. And I had a, had all the storyboards all down one hallway in the pre-production office. So we could stand there and we could all sort of understand the, the helicopter view of it. Mm -hmm. And then those all of those fights then got planned to build character and to drive the story and yo the stances to, the stairs the, let's go to then we could really plan and consider how each one works with with the next fight or works with the story around it and and kyle and chance so kyle gardner the stunt coordinator and chan griffin the fight choreographer and their Shane amazing Griffin. team. We spent a lot of time talking about the ideas that then go inside these fights that helps tell story and build character, but also just make it inventive and and really fun to watch. So 
we, my, we always talked about intelligence and, and strategy within the funds. Because if you see there's some intelligence or there's a, a plan or there's a, or there's a, a trap set or there's a, then I think those, the, the theory was that those fights would become more satisfying to watch. And then stylistically, we looked at them all and said, oh, this one, you know, and really it was about Kyle and Chan really took that and just ran with it. And it was all to do with those guys. I mean, they're the, they're the geniuses behind it, you know, the incredible job they did. And so it was just, yeah, it was a very methodical, very planned out, very considered approach to how they all sit, sat together. And I'm glad you feel that. It's great. Yeah. So at the end, we, Chan Song says that death is only the beginning and we see all this black smoke. Are you teasing Noob Saibot for that? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and why there is no Mortal Kombat tournament in the movie? Because they're teasing the tournament, but it's, they never reach the Mortal Kombat tournament. Yeah, well, that was interesting because what we didn't want to do was just repeat the original movie. That's true. You got to build up to a tournament. Very conscious of that. So we didn't want to just, but we that is good the vision was right a very there. Important ingredient in the early part of expand the your universe. Mythology. So it so, makes more you know, this, this higher stakes. IP and these stories have been going for 30 years, right? You can do so more. That was part of the other. But if you look at the MK later universe part, stuff with the, the later tournament. iterations of the games, they don't. They, they've expanded and they've really moved into much bigger ideas and playing with time and all that sort of stuff. So we needed to, we, need, we, we understood it was a very important part of it, but we also didn't want to just repeat it. And then also the thing about a tournament film, a tournament idea is it really starts to inform the structure of your film and your story. So we didn't want to be trapped or boxed trapped in with that structure. Yeah, you already telling our story because that would have really moved things around and perhaps informed a, a, a rhythm that, that I didn't necessarily want to do and, and the guys didn't want to do. So we had to we had to take it on board and but then really Shang wants to sort of move around the the tournament and and get to his desires around it. So um, that was the theory and that was the logic behind it. All right, very good, very good. Finish them. Finish them. All right, very good. Okay. Yeah, your time to answer some of these yeah, more. Uh, sorry. Is it right here? All right. Okay, now Uncaged Games video. Uh, pretty amazing that he gets to interview these uh, actors. That's really cool. So props to him. And just for the record, I have defeated Cage in his live stream on King of the Hill. And my Scorpion actually had about a 20-win streak. So I'm very proud of that. Anyway, cool dude. Let's watch him interview these guys. I know he's excited and nervous at the same time. I can tell. Let's see how he does. David. Oh, COVID. Sorry. Can't do that anymore. Uh, thank you for taking uh, your time to answer some of these questions. I do appreciate it. So on my phone here, I got a, a list of questions from me and some members of the community. So if you guys are ready, let's uh, let's get into it. That wow. sounds horrible. Perfect. <laughs> no deal. All right. <laughs> so the first question is for Josh and Jessica, and it's from Assad Muhammad, also known as Geek House Show. They ask, in the Mortal Kombat games, Kano and Sonya Blade has always been rivals. Could you tell us more about that dynamic in the movie? We don't like each other at all in real life, so it was really easy. Okay, so that's the first I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> for, me, for, me, for me, the real challenge was trying to mask the sexual tension. And <laughs> I think we did a pretty good job. He's being honest. <laughs> a little bit awkward. It's yeah, it was a bit awkward. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Jess, like, Jess and I and have, were friends before the film. I think yeah. I think Jess was the only actor I knew uh, before going into the, uh, you know, personally knew going into the film. So, uh, and 
Yeah, we had the most to do, I you I had the most to do with you, Jess, in the film. Yeah. Yes. So, and, well, I did with you too, but uh, yeah. it's really fun. We get um, to play a really fun dynamic of uh, really, I mean, yeah, we really don't like each other in this movie. Um, yeah. So and, <laughs> <laughs> that's really fun. <laughs> but, we, but we both, but we both uh, need each other in this movie, as you'll see. Um, so we have to kind of get along, even though we hate each other, which is a really fun dynamic to play. And also because we are friends outside of this whole, um, project it, it was also fun to kind of hate each other on on you know on set on a daily basis but i think what i i mean you know from from a like a wanky actor point of view as well that relationship has you know twists and turns throughout the movie as well it's not just this oh we just hate each other and that's it from start to finish you know mm -hmm. i think there is this weird you know unexpected nature to what happens with sonia and hopefully it's Anna a gradual well, thing and, like you know, I think it's true to. But he did kill her partner. Is that going to be explained? I mean, the games and has always been true for them. I mean, they are I such they famous that. antagonists. You know, in the in the in the lore of Mortal Kombat, and, and that's, uh, you know, you're going to get that. But there's also there's a bit of uh, a bit evolution of to that as well. See, yeah, it's yeah, the dance is right. Yeah. Uh, our next question is for Ludi. What up, cuz? How you doing? And Max from Aaron, also known as Caboose, good friend of ours on the channel. He asked, I love the chemistry between your characters in the film in the way Liu Kang and Kung Lao truly felt like brothers. Was that something that came naturally on set? Uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're like brothers. There's no sexual tension between them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in China, you don't have, well, I didn't grow up with the word cousin. They're just all brothers. Uh -huh. And especially growing up in Shaolin, you guys are literally like brothers. It's like you, you find a new family. And that's what Liu Kang is. He's... He's kind of like this uh, scraggly lone wolf, and they dubbed me actually the des desert sprite. Was that? Yeah. Was that right? Desert sprite. Desert sprite. The lonely desert sprite wandering around trying to find his pack. Um, and of course, long time ago, Kung Lao is the first uh, first other sprite that Liu Kang finds. So he's <laughs> gathering all these sprites together. We're gonna have a sprightly adventure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, yeah. I, um, I think. Uh, uh, Ludi and I, we had no problem problem with uh, finding the um, connection between the two characters because we we know each other. Like the first time we met was nine years ago, I believe. We met on a movie set um, and had the chance to work together. And then when we heard that we, we that we would be working together on Mortal Kombat, it was just like, yeah, man, because. He, by then, he was already my brother, and so it was very easy to find Yeah, that was interesting. Find so nine years ago, Max, we were playing best friends as well, because you were... Um, so Max has had extensive martial arts experience. He's been on Jackie Chan's stunts team, stunt team for over 10 years, and on the film we met, you were stunting for uh, my best friend's... Uh, the actor that played my best friend, right? Hmm. Yeah, so, I, I doubled for him, so, so we are, we're already somehow fighting or i was protecting you or you were protecting I was, me i was chained up i was hung for <laughs> for hours there in that scene it was like negative 19 degrees i was hung for hours and then you were getting beaten up too so yeah through through negative sweat, 19 blood, we're degrees there together that's what so movie cold. is that? I want to see that film. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see a movie. A great, a great <laughs> I want to see hang. I don't know, but um, it's got a great name. It's I'm sorry, I love you. Oh. Sorry, I love okay. you. I mean, okay. getting I'm I mean, you're you. getting hung up for hours like that. Um, that was kind of the rap party for me. I seem to remember. <laughs> <laughs> things got out of control, but we we can talk about that another time. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's talk about it now, Josh. <laughs> Twelve minutes talking about this. <laughs> yeah, so cool, cool, cool. Speaking of cool, Joe, I'm looking at you, Sub Zero. Hey, uh, all right. Every time you showed up on the <laughs> screen, I got chills. Pun intended. My question is: Was it difficult filming fight scenes and just moving around while wearing the Sub Zero outfit? Okay, I gotta be honest. It was, it was really heavy. <laughs> it was really I remember the first time I wore the suit I was like it was like and and with me and Cappy the he's she's amazing he's like this is the costume try it out and then I tried and I, I was in the costume I was like how am I gonna be able to fight in this costume Cappy <laughs> I was I was, I was so worried that is this the only costume and then she was like yes <laughs> No way! And I'm like, just kidding. Of course, we, we have we have you another costume that you can fight. 
So it's very thoughtful. It's very thoughtful for, for them to, you know, to, to just create two versions. So one is for the look, it's just all iron, just super heavy, maybe more than 10 kilos. And another one is, another one is like six to seven kilos. And then, you know, you can still move with all parts. It's just, you know, you can still, you know, stretch your body and then stretch your legs. So, yeah, yeah, it, it was it was challenging for me. And then it took me at least three weeks to really adapt with the costume. And then I remember the first two weeks, and I, I feel like my, my I, I, you know, I had a back pain. Like it was, it was just so hard to move anyway, because with the costume, because it just put a weight on your shoulder. So you walk like this. And when you release the costume at the end of the day, somehow you still feel like there's a child on, on your back. <laughs> so after two weeks, your neck is kind of I felt weird. And then the third week, kind of like my body adapted. My body adapted. Kind of like, okay, you're going to feel it at least another three months. So get used to it. So it's good. I, I have to say, I think it was especially tough for Joe because I think he's a method actor. And I've seen him yes. destroy a pack of like six full on big ice cream bars. <laughs> to get into character for I, Sub-Zero. I, I ate them all. I ate them all. Um, he had to fight against the weight gain and get into character that way. He has to fight yeah. with ice cream. And he loves ice cream. Mess. Well, well, Ludi, Ludi, I needed to, I need, I needed to eat those sugars because I remember, I think after a month. And then Cappy was like, why the costume now is bigger? <laughs> did, did you lose weight? I was like, of course I lost weight, Cappy, because every time I took off the costume, like all the sweat, and then, yeah. okay, you need to eat more. Otherwise, the costume is not going to fit you next to mine. <laughs> so I got I to gotta eat all the sugars. <laughs> Speaking of outfits, That's funny. Better eat, eat more to, the to fit What was thing? it like bringing these characters to life? and putting on your outfits for the first time. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think we, we all initially started, if I'm correct, in, uh, with costume fittings. So it was wild. We all kind of flew into this, this place that none of us had really ever been to before. And I hadn't even met everyone yet, but I went straight to a costume fitting. And uh, yeah, I put my costume on and was like, well, I guess this is happening. Woo! <laughs> um, it was really cool. And uh, and then, yeah, I think for me as well, the first time seeing everyone else in costume uh, was basically on set. So mm -hmm. every time someone knew who I had just started filming stepped on set, it was like a big reveal for everyone. It was really cool. <laughs> nice. first time, I mean, the costume was was pretty pretty badass, but really for me, the, uh, I, I had a big makeup job every day, right? <clears throat> so the makeup job for me, was I was in the makeup chair for hours, you know, uh, every morning and uh, so it was once that once I was able to look in the mirror <laughs> and see the fucking blood and dirt and, um, <laughs> that I felt like I was like oh this does most of the work <laughs> this is, I don't have to do anything um, so yeah I, I you know for me more makeup I mean the costume is amazing but in terms of feeling like the character I always felt like them just looking at how uh, bloody and, and and beaten up he was was that uh, that helped me kind of feel like oh yeah now i'm now i'm paying getting a frame of mind that was easy uh, i think this my my costume mercenary. is really comfortable i loved it it's so, so <laughs> light and easy to fight I of course you want to, to dig into joe i wanted you guys to hear um kung lao's hat costume story because oh yeah I want to hear that. Go ahead, Mac. You tell him. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, um, that hat is heavy. <laughs> so, um, so I can kind of feel uh, when Joe was talking about his costume that it was that heavy. Um, yeah, they actually, um, once I got the job, they asked me to fly out to New Zealand, to Wellington, and uh, try on the hat, just for trying on the hat. I was like, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just go out and go make sure your neck is uh, up to like, snuff. Yeah, we're happy. Go, you can go back home. Really? <laughs> That's it? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. That's I great. Yeah, yeah. I think I ended up uh, spending a week or so in New Zealand for the first time in my life. Just wow, me, I had to try the beautiful. Can they fly you back home to Germany? Um, no, I think at that time I was in Beijing in China and they flew me out wow to, to <laughs> well you imagine if you did that right now it's 
two weeks quarantine over there. I know. Another, back wow. Three weeks quarantine. It's another world right now that we're living in. That's what I miss the most is flying around the world trying on hats. <laughs> you know? I know. I when know. can we get back to that? You know? That hat, I, I, I prepared myself um, during the preparation phase, uh, the training phase, um, cutting out the hat from cardboard and putting it on my hat. And I was I was doing the spins, the flips, everything with it, and it felt nice, you know. I was like, yes, I got this, I got this. <laughs> and when I when I tried on the new hat, I like really. <laughs> it, it, it Do it again. Like, um, probably eight kilograms. So imagine Oof, seventeen imagine, pound. Um, there was no way I could do the way I wanted to, but okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I can kind of I, imagine I that. Know how we did that, to be honest. Wow, but. Yes, well, when you when you're in character, to, um, the effects it is what it is, and um, Simon's creativity, I think, eventually, mm -hmm. wow. were successful. So that's the story behind the hat. Wait till all your cardboard hats show up on eBay. Just land them first. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So uh, the final question here is because I know you guys are. Uh, very busy, and you guys probably got to film the second Mortal Kombat movie, which I'm still waiting for my call, but it's all right. Maybe my script hasn't got here yet. Uh, my final question is, if you were to play any character in the MK universe, it could be your character or a different character, who would that character be? Reptile. Because hmm. yes. you want to disappear. I can see that in you. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> or you like the skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scales? Yeah, yeah reptile vibes. <laughs> In Goro, I guess. I feel like Prince Gar. I just feel like I could get so much more done with an extra pair. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Just think about think about the massages I get. <laughs> Am I wrong? Four arm massage. <laughs> One inside story. Like, yourself. When when I first appear in the movie and Josh is coming out with those lines like from out of nowhere. I mean, he, he's so great at uh, improvising. We, 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 all, we all cracked and, and there was one particular thing where I was like, I can't I just couldn't <laughs> hold it. So it was very tough, but- uh, What was so the line? Funny, it's a funny uh, line. You guys are the best. Um, what about <laughs> you guys? What, who would you be? Ludi, Max, Joe? Man, I just don't know. I, I just identify with Liu Kang. He's, He's vegan. I'm vegan. <laughs> vegan. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Matt, anytime you feel like a steak, you can be kind of. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I would actually be Sonia, to be honest, as well. I think she's bad on so I love her. Joe, what about you? Well, in, in, this, in this movie, if I, uh, if I can choose different character, probably... Um... Well, well, I gotta say, when I was a kid, I grew up playing Mortal Kombat, and Kung Lao is one of my heroes. Probably, nice. I would love to play Kung Lao. He's so badass. You know, Kung Lao is so OP. You know for sure when you play game Mortal Kombat and somebody played Kung Lao back in like you know 1998, 1999 when I was you know when yeah the double kick, pop pop, pop pop, air just, kick. The, the hat is just very very annoying. You, know? you go high, you go low. Whoever, whoever you play, when somebody plays yeah. Kung Lao, was like. Not again! And again. <laughs> so yep, just, spin, you like, bounce up in the air. So, <laughs> yeah, very OP. Kung Lao is so OP, if absolutely. I, if I can play another character, I want to play the, the, the OP one. <laughs> nice. I, I, might, I might be Raiden as well and just buy a Tesla. That way... Yeah, you'd never have to, you'd never have to stop to fill up. Yeah. Never. That's a great <laughs> idea. You could do really long road trips. Mm. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> I, I think I think I would go with uh, Sub Zero, because How can we exchange? <laughs> he he um. In times like these, you have to wear a mask anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, oh, by the way, Max does an incredible impression of everybody. I don't know. If oh yeah. Know. Ooh. Come on, Max! You gotta do it! You gotta do no, it! I don't. I don't. Oh yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> I know this. Who do you? What? Oh, let's oh, go! Man, you do it, everyone. <laughs> See it. He's so good. Come on, guys! You, you're giving me pressure right now. I didn't even. Prepare. Right. Maybe but, Ludi. Uh, Ludi. Ludi tried to impersonate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was do this. Ice cream. 
<laughs> wow ice cream man, you know exactly, exactly you didn't you didn't play me man and otherwise the, the line i'm subject to oh, i love ice cream <laughs> <laughs> Funny. It's all be good great. all good well i'm happy to see you guys like i watch all your youtube videos and oh really that's awesome thank you for watching the videos and then all the support and love to this movie it's just amazing. Like, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so nice to actually meet you, if yeah. not in person yeah. online. But yeah, sure. thank you. Yes. Yeah, you guys really make it worth it. Yeah. yeah. Thank right. you so Hodge. much. Thank well, you so Hodge. much. Can't wait thank you guys so much. <laughs> We're a family. <laughs> oh, we are family. Just wait until the second one. Give me a hug. Virtual hug. Here we go. Fantastic day. <laughs> <laughs> Group hug. hug. <laughs> friendship. Friendship. Uh, thank you guys so much. I can't wait for everyone to see the film. I'm going to still be waiting on the phone for my call for the sequel. So just uh, just let me know. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there was uh, interviews with the Mortal Kombat cast. That was pretty entertaining. Great to see those guys. They're uh, fun to watch. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next one. Home Theater Rules. Wrap out. See you guys.